How's it going guys? Welcome back to the next section where we are going to continue implementing this amazing production level authentication system. All right, so in the last section, we did some of the initial setup for React. We set up some of the files we needed. And in this section, my goal is basically going to be to create the login page and then implement the actual Redux side um, where we actually implement the login functionality so we can actually log in with our login page. So that's the goal for this section and all I'm going to be trying to cover. So let's get to it. So we're going to open up this login page and this is where we're going to start off. So first thing, we're going to need some imports. We're going to need state. So use state. And this is because we're going to have to, of course, have a form where we're going to have an email and password. So we need a state to store that email and password. All right. So the next thing we're going to need is we're going to import link and redirect. This is going to come from react router DOM. We're going to need the connect helper. And this is from react Redux. And then finally, we're going to need to import our login function, which is going to come from our um, auth action, which we're going to create in a little bit. So first, let's just kind of create this form. So Let's use curly braces here because we're going to have some logic. We're going to have const form data set form data. This is use state. Oop. There we go. And then within here, we're going to have email by default. That's going to be empty and we're going to have password, which by default is also going to be empty. Now let's go ahead and destructure them. So email password. This is equal to form data. Then we're going to have our on change. So const on change E set form data. And then we're going to have dot 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 form data. And then the value that we're changing is E dot target dot name. And then what we're sent setting e dot target dot name to so e dot target dot name will either be email or password and we're going to be setting it to e dot target dot value which is the value within our input field and then of course we're only going to be changing let's say the email or the name and the rest of the form data will remain untouched so this is how we implement this on change and then we're going to have an on submit And also, by the way, I have my back end and front end running and this way I can actually see if I make any mistakes and also um, test this out after. All right. So on submit. So we're going to have e dot prevent default. And then we're also going to have our login function, which we're going to have to create. And then within here, we're going to, of course, pass the email and password. So this is going to be coming from our auth um, action. All right. So something that we're going to implement later is we're going to have an action for checking whether the user is authenticated. So we're going to have that here. Like is the user authenticated? And if so, then we're going to redirect them to the home page. So this I'm going to do later on. So I'm just going to have it as comments here for now. And then we're going to return here some JSX. Also, we're going to bring in the connect helper just to have it here ready. So what I'm going to want to return, I'm going to have a div with the class name container margin top five. And then within here, I'm going to have an H1 tag. It's going to say sign in. I'm going to have a paragraph. And it's going to say sign into your account. And then we're going to have a form. And then this form is going to have an on submit. And then that's going to be equal to E. So an arrow function where we pass in E, which is the event, and we're passing it to on submit. And we're passing in that event. So that's going to call this on submit function, which is going to call the login function for us. So 
what we're going to end up passing. We're going to have a div. Class name will be form group. So this, of course, is bootstrap functions here, or classes, um, I should say. So we're going to have an input. And then this input, it's going to have a class name of form control. We're going to have type be email because this is our email field. Placeholder is going to be email. Name will be email. And then we're going to have value be email. And then on change, and then this is going to have an event, which we pass to on change. And then we're going to have required because this field is going to be required. All right. So we're going to have our password field after this. So I'm just going to copy and then make some edits just to make this go a little quicker. So this is going to be type password. The, um, the placeholder is going to be password. The name is going to be password. The value is going to be password. And it's going to have the same on change is going to be required. And let's just add a little field here of min length. And we're going to set that to six. So we require at least six characters in order to actually submit this. And then finally, we're going to have our button here. And this button is just going to say login. And then on this button, we're going to have a class name of button, button, primary. And then going to have a type equal to submit. All right. And then I'm going to have below this form. I'm going to have a paragraph. going to have margin top three. It's going to say don't have an account. Then we're going to have a link that's going to go to slash sign up. And let's just make sure that that is indeed our link. So slash sign up. Perfect. And then we're going to have below this paragraph. So we're going to have a paragraph with the class name of margin top three again. And then this is going to be forgot your password. And then again, we're going to have a link just going to copy this. And then this is going to go to reset dash password since that is what we set that URL as reset dash password. And then this is going to say reset password. All right. And then finally, at the bottom here, we're going to have our const map state to props. So state. And then we're going to have our state here eventually, which is going to be is authenticated. So we're going to pass in the state later once we actually have this logic and then that's going to be checked here, whether the user is authenticated. If they are, they're going to be redirected to the home page. But I want to do this later just because in this section, I want to actually be able to show um, signing in a user. So for now, I'm just going to pass in null instead of map state to props here and just going to comment it out. So we're going to use this later on. And then we're going to pass in here our login function. So. Before we can actually pass in the login function, we have to create all of this stuff. So first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a component called store.js. And within here, I'm going to create the store. So we're going to have to import a few things. So I'm going to need create store, apply middleware. And this is going to come from Redux. I'm going to need compose with dev tools. This is from Redux dev tools extension. Let's make sure I spelled that right. Compose with dev tools looks good. 
I'm gonna need to bring in Thunk from Redux Thunk. Oh. All right, and I'm gonna need to bring in Root Reducers. So this is gonna come from Reducers. So this is gonna be in our folder Reducers. It's gonna be index.js. And we're gonna work on this in a little bit. We're gonna have const initial state, initial state. It's gonna be an empty object here. We're gonna have const middleware. This is gonna be thunk. We're gonna have const store, create store. Okay, then we're gonna have root reducer initial state and then compose with dev tools we're going to do apply middleware and then middleware all right perfect then we're just going to export default store and this is how we create our store and then this compose with dev tools of course is going to help us actually kind of debug what is going on in our kind of redux store all right, so next thing I'm gonna do is just go into app.js, gonna bring in the store. So before that, gonna bring in the provider tag. This is coming from, and this is coming from React Redux. And then we wanna bring in store, from store, there we go. Now let's bring in the provider tag here and wrap our app here. And we wanna wrap our app in this provider tag. Just gonna indent all this. And there we go. And we have to pass in the store. And this is how we do that. So store is equal to store. There we go. So, so far looks good. Compose is defined, but never used. So this is in store.js. So what we're gonna do now is, um, I'm gonna create a types folder here. And then within this types folder, I'm just gonna create our, I guess, dispatch states for the login. So we're gonna have export const login success and then we're gonna have login fail and then we're gonna create all our other ones in here as well but these are all the ones I'm gonna create for now um, actually I'm gonna create two more because also I'm gonna um, do ones for loading the user so I'm gonna do load user success and load user fail so these are gonna be all the ones we're gonna need to make um, this initial, I guess, section work. Let's close out some of this stuff. And let's just create our auth.js reducer. And I might as well also create our auth.js action here. All right, so let's first start working in this reducer. Gonna have to import some of these types I created. So just gonna copy these. Just paste them right in here and just gonna edit this. So I'm just gonna probably fast forward me editing this. All right, there we go. This is gonna come from actions types. And now with that, let's go ahead and create our auth reducer here. So initial state, initial state, looks good. So this is gonna be an object and we're gonna have our initial state. So we're gonna have our access token. And initially we're gonna check the local storage. If we have um, an access token in there, if we don't, then that's gonna be null. We're gonna also have a refresh token and it's gonna be very similar. So we're just gonna copy this and it's gonna check for refresh. And then we're gonna have is authenticated authenticated this is going to be null and then user is also going to be null all right let's export our default function here we're going to pass in state is equal to initial 
state. We're going to have action. And then we're going to destructure our action. So we're going to have the type and the payload. This is coming from action. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create our switch case here. So we're going to have type. We're going to have case login success. And then we're going to have case login fail. And then we're also going to have our default case, which is just going to return the state here. Okay, so let's start working on these. So for our login success here, what we're going to do is local storage dot set item. And of course, this has to be outside of this return. There we go. Set item access payload dot access. All right, and then what we're going to do is we're going to update some of these states. So first we're going to do dot 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 state. So this is our spread operator is authenticated is going to be set to true. Access is going to be payload dot access. And just going to copy this down actually. And then this is just going to be refresh, which is going to be payload dot refresh. All right. And then what we're going to need is our login fail and login fail. We're going to do state and also above here, we're going to do local storage dot remove item access refresh. So we're going to remove these from the local storage and then we're going to do access is null refresh is null is authenticated, false user, null. All right, then we're gonna have case, um, we're gonna do user, um, I'm gonna call it user loaded. Just cause I think it's a little more fitting here, so just going to go back to my types here, do user loaded. All right. So user loaded success and then case user loaded fail. All right. So for user loaded success, um, what we want to do is, okay. So for user loaded success, what we want to do is we want to do the spread operator state and we want to update user to be payload. And then for user loaded fail, what we want to do is state and set user to null. Okay. So this is our reducer all set up. Now let's go ahead and work on this action and then we can test everything out. Also expected the reducer to be a function. Of course, that is because we have to edit this a little bit so that we can actually um, grab that auth reducer. So let's go ahead and work on that. So we're going to import combine reducers from Redux, import auth from dot slash auth, export default combine reducers. Oh my, there we go. And then we're going to pass an auth. So that should hopefully fix our issues. It does. Let's go to slash login here. And it seems that I didn't bring in bootstrap yet. So if I go to public index.html, yeah, so I don't have bootstrap yet. So let's go ahead and do that. Oh my goodness. Can't spell. Okay. Bootstrap. So let's go to bootstrap CDN here. We want the CSS. Let's expand this, grab this HTML. 
go back here right above this title tag. Just gonna paste that in here. Just gonna refactor it a little so it looks nicer. And make sure to have a slash here. All right, that looks good. And let's change this to be auth system. All right, let's check out our app. There we go, that looks a lot nicer now. So we have a proper looking form here. Let's make sure this all works. Yep, we are able to type no problem here. And then we can also go to our sign up page and our reset password page, so perfect. Alrighty, so let's close up some of this stuff that we don't need and let's go ahead and work on our auth action now. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is just open up the auth reducer and just copy this just so I don't have to do that again. There we go, and that's just gonna come from dot slash types because types is in the same level as this. All right, so what we're gonna need to do now is create our login function that's gonna be export, or whoops, not default, export const login. And then we're gonna pass email, password, it's gonna be async dispatch. And then we're also gonna need load user. So load user, I can just put right above here. So I'm just gonna copy this. And this is gonna be load user. And then for load user, we don't have to pass in anything. Okay, so let's get working on our login function here. So we're gonna have some config. So const config is equal to headers. We're gonna pass in content type, which is gonna be application JSON. And then we're gonna do const body is not booty, but body, <laughs> there you go. JSON.stringify. And we're gonna stringify the email and the password. And then this way we can actually pass in this in our API request, which we're also gonna need to bring in Axios. All right. Now let's have our try catch. All right, and then within this try, we're gonna do const response is equal to await axios.post. And then we're gonna do, let's see. So we set up, did we set up our env file? Okay, no we didn't. So let's go ahead in the source folder, create a dot env. We're gonna do react app API URL. And that's gonna be local, or whoops, HTTP local host 8000. Let's save that. So react app API URL. We're gonna pass that in, react app API URL, and that's gonna come from process.env. And then we're gonna do auth slash JWT slash create slash. And make sure to have the slash at the end. If you don't, you're gonna get a 403 forbidden error. Then we're gonna pass our body and our config. And then we're gonna dispatch and then the type that we're dispatching is going to be our login success. And then the payload is gonna be response.data, which is gonna be our access and refresh token. And then if we go back here, so we're gonna have an object with our access and refresh token, and then we're gonna grab the access from that object, and we're gonna pass it to our access redux state, and we're gonna grab the refresh from that object and pass it into our refresh redux state. All right. So we're gonna dispatch that. And then if we have any kind of issue, then we're going to dispatch login fail. 
and then we're not going to dispatch any payload here. Okay, so that should be good. Now let's go ahead and create our load user here. So for load user, what you want to do is first of all, check if local storage dot get item access. If this exists, then we're going to do const config and let's go ahead and just copy this here just to save a little bit of typing. And then we're going to want to pass in a few more things here. So we're going to have content type application, JSON, we're going to have authorization. And then this is going to be JWT. And then within here, we're going to do local storage dot get item access. So then this is how we send our authorization token. And then we're going to do accept. And that's going to be application JSON. All right, so that's our config or config. <laughs> now I'm just going to go ahead and copy this, just paste it in here and do some edits. So we're going to do an Axios and instead of post, we're going to have a get request and that's going to go to um, off users slash me and then the slash at the end again and we're just passing in our config. So this is an endpoint that is handled by Joser and it'll pass you back the user. Okay, so now what we're going to going to want to do is pass in user loaded success. And if that's the case, we're going to do response dot data is what we're going to pass. And then if we had some kind of issue, then we're going to do user loaded fail. And then in that case, we're not going to pass anything. And then also, if we don't have an access token in our local storage, we're going to have an else here where we're also going to dispatch this user loaded fail. Okay, and then of course, the final thing that we want to do is in our login here. So we log in the user, but we also want to load the user. So the way that we do that is right below here, you do a dispatch. And then you dispatch load user. And there we go. So now the very last thing we have to do is actually bring all of this into our um, login container that we made so that it actually works. So we're going to bring so we're going to import login. This is going to come from actions auth. And then we're going to want to pass that in here. And then we're also going to want to pass that in here. And then of course, our on submit, we're also going to want to have to or we're going to want to have this login here where we pass in the email and the password field. All right, let's test this out. So one of the accounts that I created was John Doe 1357915. And then I set a password of this incredible password 321. So log in. Now let's check our Redux state and see what happens. So we actually got a login failed here. And nothing was updated. Interesting. Let's see what happened. Okay, and this is probably because let's see. So 404 not found. Yeah, so I figured so I put my dot env in the wrong place. So let's see, where's my dot env? Okay, so I should put this in here. There we go. So it's on the same level as this source. Okay, so now with that, let's go ahead, refresh this. And let's go ahead, log in, and let's see what happened. So we got login failed again. So why did we get login failed this time? Okay, and the reason why we got a login failed is because I didn't bring in cores origin here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to actually build the application here. So npm run build. 
So we're going to let that build and probably just going to fast forward to when it's built. There we go. So the application is built. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this and paste it right into here. Okay, so now our backend has this built template. So if we go to port, so localhost 8000 slash login, we should get the same page. And of course, right now we have our default state with access null, refresh null. And by the way, if you don't know what this thing is, um, it's a Chrome extension. Um, you could probably just search up Redux Chrome extension and you'd probably find it in case you're wondering how I got this. And also Compose with DevTools is what lets me actually have this thing so I can debug the app. So it's very handy. You can see when the states um, differentiate. You can see the different, um, I guess, uh, what are they called? Like the dispatch types, I guess, that trigger here. And then you can also see the state itself, which is very handy. So we have our auth reducer and all the different pieces of states within that. Okay, so let's go ahead and test out if our login works. All right, let's go ahead, log in. And there we go, we got a type of login success, user loaded success. And if we check out our state now, we see that our access is our access token, our refresh is our refresh token, is authenticated as true, and we also have our user. So here we have the name, which is John Doe. We have their ID, which is two, and we have their email, which is John Doe one three five seven nine one five at gmail dot com. So beautiful. So right now we have the sign in functioning on our application. So awesome. So I hope you enjoyed the section. Make sure to leave a nice big like for me and subscribe if you enjoy this content. And I will see you in the next section where we will continue implementing this amazing production level authentication system. All right, thank you.